Hey folks, welcome back to TA Outdoors. It is a glorious day today, and I'm gonna spend a night in the bunker. Those of you who've been following my channel know that I have been attempting to renovate the World War II bunker that is here in my back garden. And uh, it's it's been a bit difficult where we've had pretty bad weather. And also now we've got this, this virus pandemic. It's meant that all the hardware stores that are near me are now either shut or very limited to who they let in. At the moment, the ones that are near me are only letting tradesmen in um, who obviously really require that stuff. Uh, but I'm not a tradesman, so they're pretty strict. And unfortunately, it meant that I can't crack on with the renovation until this lockdown here in the UK, which has been three weeks already now, until this lockdown is lifted. By the way, hope you're all keeping safe out there. And uh, yeah, we're all going to get through this soon, hopefully. So, as a result of that, I thought, well, I still want to do something in the bunker. So, why not do an overnight? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to set up the. I've set up the wood stove. I'm going to get it going in a minute. It will either kill me or keep me nice and warm and toasty. Let me explain. So this is my garden. It's actually looking pretty good today. I've mowed the lawn. Got lots of time on my hands. And this is the bunker. Previous episodes, you'll know, we have sealed and put a grate on the top to stop my younger daughter falling in when she's older. There is the stovepipe. I'm not sure if that should be a little bit higher, but I'm out of pipes. So it just about fits, but there's a nice draw. It's above this brick level just, I don't know, maybe two, three inches, which means the wind's going to cut across there. It's quite a windy day. And that's going to suck air out. Hopefully, uh, keep that fire going in there. But that's a pretty, pretty big drop. I'd say that's 13 feet, maybe 12. Yeah, 12 feet. It's a long way down. So it's a lot of pipes. Anyway, still got loads to do. Got to sort that barbecue out as well at some point. This door needs sorting. Again, I can't do anything till I get the resources. But let's take a look inside. In one of the episodes recently, I sealed it with some sealant masonry paint. After I did that, we then had three weeks of torrential solid rain and it got in all the cracks in the door, the rusty door and everything. And it meant that it just dripped and kind of didn't set properly. I've only just had these doors open and let it air for the last two weeks of this really good weather and it started to dry loads. So all of this is dry now. A few damp patches down here, but it's dry on the floor. Still got the sump pump hole, gonna sort that out, it's dry luckily. But look, there's still damp patches in there, I know, I can see that. But it's way better than what it used to be. And hopefully, this little fella is gonna get nice and warm, and that's part of the reason I wanted to do it, because it is quite chilly down here. And this will hopefully dry out the rest of the remaining damp patches, but loads of it has dried out, which is good. The ceiling's dry, this wall's dry. You can see the drip marks here where it comes down. Even though I've got a plastic vent that I put over the top, it condensates and it still seeps in. But we're getting there, people. And this is the stove today that I'm gonna use. It's been, it's had plenty of use before. You can see from the color of the pipes and the stains on the top there. This is the G-Stove Heat U. Um, I've been using this for years. I've actually got two, yeah, two of them I've got one in my little pallet wood cabin, and uh, also obviously this one, and actually Dad's got one as well in his tackle shack. So we've been using these for years now. Norwegian-based company, really nice guys. Family business. I'll pop a link and a discount code in the description. Priorities first, obviously, had to get the camp chair in here. That, obviously I'm not gonna sleep in this, but sorry about the echo as well. It's, uh, it's just a nice place to chill while I cook something on the stove before I set up some sort of bed in here. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Before I crack on with getting the stove going, sorting things out in here, cooking some food, etc. If you would like to catch up on this series where I first walked into this shelter, this air raid shelter, then there's a link up here in the corner or I'll put one in the description below. Um, I think I'm about three, maybe four, maybe four episodes in. It's gonna, once this lockdown lifts, guys, I'm gonna crack on with this and really try and get this bunker done because I'm itching to get it done now. And we've got the good weather, this sunny weather outside, warm weather, to, uh, to hopefully dry it out. So, 
stove, chair, beer maybe, or a wine. It's some sort of beverage with what's going on. Let's get this stove going. Sun in the eyes. Yeah, I had to sharpen that axe earlier because uh, it's been blunt for a long time now. You guys have picked up a bit in it in the videos and that was just a quick way that I tend to do it here at home before I go out on another bushcraft and camping trip. It's always important to have tools sharp and keep them sharp. Uh, but that one had far too many dings in it. So I had to use a file to get the profile back and then get that sharpening puck, that sharpening circular stone, just to polish up the edges and try and refine the edge. And it works, you saw me chopping wood it's you know it's not got a polished finish i didn't use a leather strop or anything like that a stropping compound but it cuts wood and that's the main thing look at this weather Ooh. awesome no bushcraft today i'm using the zip high performance odorless fire lighters these are just the ones i keep in my house to light my wood stove in the winter little bricks I've laid a little platform in there with a couple of small sticks. Just going to put two of those in there, break them up a bit, and then some smaller sticks, thinner ones on top of those. I don't want to smother it, so probably about there. Now I've got a damper on the first stove pipe, but that's okay. This is the main airflow. But really, this is the main retreat, because if this, here's the thing, hold on. You may have heard me earlier mention it'll either kill me or keep me nice and warm. Here's the thing, this is actually quite, not, well, it is fairly silly, it's stupid to do. I'm not gonna let this run right, no way, because as it cools, that air will sink from the stove pipes and it can come back out this stove and I'm in such a sealed unit here that I, it was probably highly likely I could get carbon monoxide poisoning. So don't do this at home. Full disclosure, this stove is going to go out before I go to bed, 100%. I'm not going to risk uh, leaving that burning in such a small space. What I'm really using it for is to cook some food and dry out the walls for a bit. Maybe tomorrow I'll let it run all day and come and top it up all the time and that will really help to dry these walls out. But yeah, just, uh, just letting you guys know there. Now the issue is, is because I've added, look how long these stove pipes are. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight stove pipes, and they're only a fairly narrow diameter because they're used for small tents. So the issue is I might have, and why it's dangerous, is if I light that fire, well, when I light that fire, we're get, you know, as the day goes through and we get towards evening, the air temperature is going to cool. And as hot air rises, all this hot air is going to rise towards the top. As it rises, it cools. This stovepipe here is always going to be way hotter than the one up the top there. The more stovepipes you have, the colder it gets towards the top. And also, the air itself, the smoke, is going to cool as well. It's going to get heavy as it gets up there because it's got further to travel up such a narrow diameter. So it's going to sink and that hot air will eventually sink and come back down. And that's how you, you know carbon monoxide poisoning with stoves uh, can happen. So that's my risk. Really, like I said, with that top hat, that little uh, section at the top, that needs to be higher, <laughs> but it can't because I've got too many stove pipes anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that, straight away. Will I get that one? We're we good. Hold breath. Wide open. I hope there's airflow as well in here. There's not much airflow. Normally there would be much more air if I was camping going into that. Let's go check the top. Whoa, that's bright. Oh, can you, can you hear that roar? We have smoke, people. We have smoke. Oh, that's a really good draw. I don't know if you can hear that roar. That's the wind we need. That's going to keep me alive. Listen to that. Wow, that's a better draw than I thought. I feel a bit more comfortable now with all that smoke going up. Yeah. 
Yes. It is working, people. Okay. So, smoke's coming in this direction. Not that it makes a difference out here. And it's not as the... Woo, look at that go. Boom. That is ripping. This has worked so much better than I thought. <laughs> look how, look at it. Oh, it's hot already. That is roaring. Yes, I can even turn it down. Oh, this is, this is good, boys. And uh, let's just load. Let's load. I don't want to do it. I'm gonna go get some food ready, I think. Let's start. Looking on this, that, that's, that's shut down. Wow. I'm impressed. Okay, I've been in the house. Got myself a saucepan of water. And that is going straight on the stove. So another thing I love about wood stoves is that you can put things on them straight away as soon as the fire's going. If this was a campfire, I'd have to build up the coals and the embers before I could put that on, or a pan on, because it would just put the flames out and put the coals out. So, good thing about a wood stove. I need to boil that water. I don't want to melt the chair. Looking good. Got some wood. Yes. Piece from my wife as well. Brilliant. Ah, you've come to join me. Hello, you smell the food, haven't you? You coming in for the third time? Yeah, no, you're not. Okay. You're lost. They appear to be boiling. Here goes. What a surprise. Smell the food, have you? Smell the food, have you? <laughs> give me that. Give me, give me. Pasta is cooked. Bit of Lloyd Grossman. Who remembers Lloyd Grossman? Still around, obviously. Just don't tend to see him cook much these days. Now normally you're meant to cook that sauce with a different pan, but I'm a bit of a one pound wonder, so let's stir that in. I can tell you now, it smells a lot better than it looks. That doesn't look too good. Trust me, it smells good though. Tomato and chilli. Tuna and some cheese. Tuna cheese pasta. Keeping it simple. With prime time all day. Let's do an arty slow mo to make it look good. Look where this the steam is being drawn to. So with that door open and the stove pipe's working well, it's getting sucked in. That is creating a suction. Look at that. Nerd life. Can you guys see that? That steam? Look at it go straight to the stove. Science! The truth. Spices in this sauce as well. Mm. 
I'd say that's pretty good going for the first bunker meal. I've turned the stove, no I haven't. I've turned the stove down, because I don't need it for the heat really. No, I just need to make those logs last as long as possible to try and dry out these walls. I've got this little ash scraper as well, which goes inside a stove pipe. But I'm going to use it to stoke up those coals a bit more. Last log. Don't suffocate me. That is ripping. I'm impressed with how efficient this is given the length of the stove pipes I've got up there. <laughs> this is cool, I'm looking forward to the first night in there. Got myself a fine ale. I like how they've uh, they've done this one. So it's called Somerset because that's where I, I live in Somerset, the county. But look at the way they spelt it. Somerset. I like that. Apologies, all you Somerset people, with my poor accent. And it says, tangerine fruity blonde. I'm not alone in the bunker tonight. I want to text the wife that. <laughs> I'm leaving you for a blonde. She may not like this. I've had to come out to get a signal. To send it. <laughs> Is she gonna reply? Oh, she's typing. It's not. This might not end well. Ooh. Oh no, it's a long one. That means they're angry. Oh dear lord, I am in trouble. Best not be that tasty <laughs> local. <laughs> oh, she's 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 found out. She already knew. Dang it! Let's send a reply. Turned. I don't have a bottle opener. Popped into the garden shed. Got a fork. Don't want this going everywhere. Like that. Well, I suppose now is a good time to say cheers. Thank you guys for watching my videos. It's a very strange time out there at the moment. It's weird. You know, it's not, it's not a positive thing. There's plenty of negativity in the news about everything, economy, you know, the terrible death rates and everything, the people being affected, the frontline workers, it's pretty horrific. But we've got to stay positive in these times. And so that is my duty to you guys, is to create some good content for you to enjoy. So I say cheers to you. Cheers to everyone out there on the front lines doing their bit. We can get through this. We can do this. For my bed setup, I've got a backpack in the garage, which I'll bring in here. It's a pretty big hike to the garage. I just want to say I appreciate you guys watching the videos. It's, uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, that's just, you know, a lot of people ask how they can support me. Uh, that's pretty much, you know, the main way is just watch the videos and enjoy them and uh, stick around. That's the, main, that's the main way for you guys to help me, really. I'm grateful for it. Let's crank this a little bit. Update for you guys. The uh, stove is now going out pretty much. There's still a bit of a glow in there. It's actually quite warm in here, but I think the concrete's just absorbed some of that heat. However, I don't think it's going to last. It's also dark outside, which I'll show you in a minute. And I brought in my backpack, which is very simple because my house 
is just there, so I don't need loads of gear. So I've literally got, I was thinking about how I'm going to do this, sleeping in here, uh, whether to get, I don't have like a raised camp bed, so I've got to go pretty much on the deck. So, usual set up, inflatable mattress. I've got to be careful this does not touch a stove, it will blow. So, chair. <laughs> that literally just fits, look at that. For those who have a therm rest, that's how big the bunker is. Just the length of the old therm rest. <laughs> Gotta avoid that hole there. But you can see there's a little bit of a glow left. I don't, like I said, I don't want to waste myself, so I'm gonna leave that to burn out. And perhaps get some fresh air before I go to bed. But that, Fits like a glove. Next up is the sleeping bag. Same bag I always use, guys. Winter, sort of my winter one. Three season bag, but it works well in winter. This is it. I hope it, it's really sort of uh, rough concrete. I hope my thumb rest doesn't pop. It's going to be too, but slightly worrying. Tuck the old socks into the trousers. Get that happy camper look. Oh yes. Oh, oh. This is, look at that. <laughs> it looks so funny on the screen. Just a guy in a 6x6, six 6x5 six, six concrete. <laughs> this is so far from what I normally do, camping in the woods and bushcraft. So far. I've officially lost it. This is what lockdown does to people. This is indeed what it does. Do you know what's always funny about doing these shots? The, the bedtime shots? Is that... Yeah, zipping up the sleeping bag and everything like that. What people don't realise is, when I say goodnight, I've got to get up and turn the camera off. <laughs> I'd love to say this is comfortable. <laughs> oh, I've just realised the vent's open as well. So if it rains, it's coming straight on the kisser. However, there is no wind in here. No breeze. Uh, this is all fun guys, all, all fun and games. I've wanted to do a night in here for uh, quite a while. I was planning on actually getting this completely finished before doing it. You know, having a decent little raised bed and things like that. But, Lockdown occurred, and uh, I thought, why not? It's sealed, it, all the water's pumped out. I've got the water out, I've sealed the walls as best I can. I've got a wood stove. To be honest, I've got a bit of wood in the corner over there by this light, so if it does get cold at night, I may fire it up. But, yeah, this is a winter bag, so I think I'm going to be good. it be interesting to see if I end up in the sump hole at some point in the night. A few bugs in it, but I think we'll be all right. Anyway, I'm gonna say good night. Uh, I'll probably do a little fade to black transition, and as that comes in, <laughs> you guys will see the next day. But I'll actually be getting up to turn the camera off and get back in the sleeping bag. Woohoo! Good night, people. I'll see you in the morning. Cue the black fade. It is dark in here now and quiet. Young Michael was snoring, dreaming and catching some sleep in the warm concrete box. 
Good night. Good morning, folks. Uh, I would highly recommend not sleeping in a concrete bunker if you can. Yeah, it's really not that comfy. It did get a bit chilly last night, but I was fine in this sleeping bag. And uh, because we're springtime, to be fair, the birds woke me up really early because straight above me, obviously, it's, good. it's all open, the vent. You can hear them now. And being in a garden, there's tons of garden birds, so it was noisier than it would normally be in the woods. So yeah, <laughs> lesson learned. Tell you what, I'm glad I did it. Can't say I would do it again. Well, if I did it again, I'd need to have a proper bed in here. I'd need a decent setup. And not just sleeping purely on the floor like I am now. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. I'm gonna get the stove going in a minute and cook up some, well actually get a coffee on probably and let it fire up, cook up some food and then yeah, the wife's probably gonna be wondering where I am. So, uh, yeah, we'll crack on with that. Not much air in here, not much air movement. I wouldn't wanna do more than 24 hours in a bunker, to be honest. The subscriber kind of customized this mocha pot, uh, which you normally would have a hand over the back a lot of the time. But what he's done is he's made this, he's got a piece of copper pipe and he's made this sort of wood handle so that you can, there is a hole to put a pin in there, but I've forgotten the pin. You can do that and you can uh, get it on and off the campfire, because obviously if your hand's here on a handle, it's gonna be really hot over the campfire. But with this extended wood, piece of wood, it just goes over there, and that way you can hold it over the, uh, the fire and keep it away from the heat. The only thing I'd say is, it, once you've done that, it's quite difficult to pour afterwards. So, yeah, just have to be wary of that. But once you get the hang of it, it's a cool little thing. So thank you to that subscriber. So, let's get some coffee in there. I've been smashing through the funky chicken, the red rooster. Great, uh, I like this coffee, it's a nice one. So I've got water underneath this base, for those who haven't used this, um, this type of coffee maker before. Most of you will have. And then the water's gonna come up through there and sort of percolate. I think that's the word, in through this when the steam rises. 
when it's hot enough. Usually about a minute it takes. I don't know on the wood stove how long it's going to take. We shall see. But yeah, so that's where it will come up through and you'll generally hear it come up before you sort of see it. Up that goes. And actually, I could probably put that there and still cook my breakfast. I do. Woohoo! Yes, it fits. Amazing. Saucissons. Oh, it's smelling so good in here. The stove is great with these side shelves here. You just hang your cooking utensils from them. Pretty cool. There we go. It's filling up. Can you see it? Boom, there we go. Keep the flavour in. Got my cup. And like I say, this is the difficult bit. Getting the core right. Nailed it. It's getting pretty long and obviously with us on this look at it with us on this lockdown all the uh, the barbers are shut <clears throat> so I'm gonna so I've got a set of hair clippers which I've had with the different grades and everything and I'm gonna try and let my wife cut my hair I know don't all fall off your seats laughing she's genuinely gonna try and cut my hair with clippers and gonna try and get a fade now I've seen some pretty horrific videos out there of people whose wives or girlfriends or partners have uh, gone to do the old skin fade and just completely cut into their hair and they've had to shave the whole thing. Now I've been torn whether to just get the clippers, set it at grade three, maybe four, five, whatever, and just completely, you know, go through the lot, have it all even one length. But doesn't sort of suit me, although I wouldn't be bothered, I do wear a cap a lot of the time. Uh, I'm just going to go for it and uh, my wife's really keen on doing it. Whether that's a tactic of hers to shave a ball patch into my head, I don't know. But follow my Instagram because I'll probably post the progress on there. Head on to my Instagram, TA Outdoor Official, to follow the progress on that one. But I quite like the setup, having a stove there, being able to cook, being able to get warmth in here and dry out the bunker, which it needs. So, I might burn this for the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, just sit around, I might do a bit of work on the floor. I've still got some of the sealant paint left, so I might sweep it up and do a bit more work. Looking a little too good. Whoa. Uno ego. To look pretty good. Okay, I think we're all good. Can we nail the presentation? That is awesome. Fantastic.
fantastic. There we go, I've done the first night at the bunker. I'm pretty pleased with it. It wasn't the most comfortable night, but you know, I'm just glad I've done it. And uh, you guys have wanted to see it for a long time since I started the series. Hopefully the next time I do a night in here, I will do another night. There'll be a proper bed that I'll put in. There'll be a much better setup. It'll all be sealed up. Uh, I can get the vent sorted. I can get the door sorted. Who knows, maybe you can get some sort of solar power down here, some solar electric. And uh, yeah, just let me know your suggestions of things you'd like to see in here. I always ask that in each video I do for the bunker because some of you guys have come up with some really good ones and I write them down on the list. So uh, yeah, if you've got any ideas, um, thanks to all the, uh, the, the tradesmen out there who gave me tips on how to seal it. Uh, I think I'm, I'm sealing it the best way I can, but it's never gonna be completely properly sealed from the sounds of it, which is okay. As long as it doesn't have water in the bottom, I'm okay with that. I just wanna give a little shout out to, he doesn't watch my channel, this guy. He's 99 years old and his name is Captain Thomas Moore. Uh, he's been a he's been on the news a ton here in the UK at the moment. Uh, he's an army veteran who did I think he was in the World War Two. He served in World War Two, then he went on to serve all over the world. And what he's done is his hundredth birthday is coming up at the end of this month, April, and he's doing a hundred laps of his garden and raising money for the NHS charities. The NHS, for those that know, don't know, is our national health service which is currently under a lot of strain, as most countries with COVID-19 are. And he is about to complete his 100 laps. I think his original target was £1,000. That's what he wanted to do. Then it started getting bigger and it went to, you know, they raised the bar because so many people flooded him with donations. It went up to uh, 100,000. Then they put it to 250. Then they put it to 500,000. And this was no word of a lie within a day of each other almost and now it's up to 12 million pounds he is the single biggest uh, like charity donator on just giving the website just giving the single biggest and he's 99 years old and he's already broken that record on just giving of an independent um, donator which is just insane and i love that it's an army veteran uh, someone who's served for our country and who's gone through an absolute ton and is still never ha now having to go through obviously everything that's going on in the world now and he just keeps his head up and he's an absolute inspiration, a true hero. I did my part, I donated, I think today he's about to finish his 100 laps but he said he's going to carry on going to see how much he can raise for our health service so I'm going to put a link to uh, the Just Giving page, which I've donated to to him uh, in the description. And if you find any generosity in your heart, obviously just pop a little donation in there. I'm sure he'd be very grateful. And it's just nice to see someone of that age get the respect and you know attention that he deserves because a lot of elderly people get forgotten. And yeah, I think it's great. So to Captain Thomas Moore, pretty sure it's Captain. Uh, thank you for what you've done for our country and serving us and I hope others will be able to help you as you have helped us. But I'd also like to thank you guys, the viewers, for watching this video. I do appreciate it, and I will be back with you soon. Like I say, I've got a couple of videos in the bank, which I filmed before lockdown, which I've been holding back. But uh, yeah, I've also got some cool ones that I'm gonna do here, which I think you'll be able to learn from with some good things. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch up with you guys in the next episode.